In this video we're going to assemble a Erdi 122 trailer. The Erdi 122 is a very popular starting trailer for people that are going camping. However, quite often people end up upgrading within a few years as they outgrow it. The Erdi 122 trailer comes in two boxes. A box A which holds all the panels in except except the rear light bar and then a box B which has the mud guards, the wheels, the axle, the draw bar and the uh, light bar in it. This trailer isn't the simplest trailer to put together however uh, if you have a reasonable set of tools and some knowledge it is, uh, you can put them together. To assemble this trailer you don't need many tools although I have more out here. You just need a Stanley knife to open the box, a set of spanners covering 10, 13 and 17 mil, the same size sockets, a torque wrench and a large flathead screwdriver. Uh, I use a few more tools just to make it easier to assemble but you only need a few tools. To start off with open the box A, uh, open both boxes and it's good practice to have the box A on some trestles, a workbench or something similar to hold it off the floor. The uh, floor pan wants to be upside down. Uh, this will allow you to assemble all the underside such as the axles uh, and the wheels so that you can turn it the correct way up later. In the box A uh, there is all the panels as I mentioned earlier. With the 122 trailer it's always good to take the panels out and check the uh, captive nuts. With the way this trailer's packed, there is usually a captive nut that's come loose and kicking around in the base of the trailer. This is the loose one, it's, and it clips into a square hole in the base of the trailer. I'm not exactly sure why, but all 122 trailers have the same problem. Also in this box, there is the instructions that has the torque settings down here and not too easy instructions to follow showing you how to assemble it and something we've already taken out is a certificate of approval we do recommend that when people that people don't build these trailers uh, as the approval means that the trailer is fit for the road however you need to make sure that you've tightened everything up correctly and that the trailer is going to be right or the approval means nothing. In the box B the first two things you need to take out are the draw bar, complete with all the wiring for the lights and the axle. Then there's a pack of nuts that have everything to assemble the trailer. The first part that's fitted is this bracket that holds underneath the trailer and allows the draw bar to sit between it. This goes on the front edge and is held on by two 
M8 bolts. To fasten the bracket on the front of the trailer, you use two silver M8 bolts. In the packet there are a silver and a bronzy coloured bolt. The bronzy coloured bolt are slightly longer and it's the shorter silver ones that hold this one, this bracket on. Just assemble them loosely like so. Then the axle needs fitting. The axle goes with the wheels towards the back and mounts on the holes in the side panel which you just saw there and there. This is held on with some M10 17mm head bolts and some large spring washers. Again just put these in a few threads to line everything up. Then there's a drawbar. At the rear of the drawbar there is a bolt that goes through. Loosen that off with your fingers. Remove it and then pull the plugs for the uh, electrics out. Remove the elastic band off the cable on the front and pull a length while guiding it through the drawbar like so. Then turn the drawbar over and there's a small clip. Remove the clip and loosen the knob off the front for the tipping mechanism and lift the bracket to make sure it's loose. Mount the drawbar between the bracket on the axle and slide the bolt in. Once this is done, get the bracket and hook it around the first bracket you bolted in place and run the knob up until it holds everything in place and put the pin back in the top. Now this is done, you go back to box B and get the light bar out. The light bar needs to go on at this angle and hook the top edge here hooks around this lip. And that stands in place like so. There's then one screw with a large crosshead in it, and that goes through a hole in the centre and fastens into this centre beam. Just screw this, screw this in until it takes the slack up. The next process is wiring the lights up. There's a yellow and a green sticker to go with a yellow and a green plug. Make sure that there's enough cable pulled through. On the, on the plug there is a cutout 
on one edge and there's a pin inside the light. Line the cutout up with the pin, plug it in, then push and twist the cap to secure it in place. Do the same on the other side. And then get the cable and clip it into the metal clip under the floor pan on both sides. Once everything's assembled to this point, uh, you've got it all lined up and it's important to tighten up those the bolts that hold the bracket for the coupling on, the bolts that hold the axle on and the bolt that holds the axle to the coupling. The front ones that are M8 are torqued to 18 newton meters. The ones that hold the axle on are torqued to 30 newton meters and the one that goes through the axle is also an M10 bolt but if you tighten it to 30 newton meters it stops the tipping action happening as it's got a nylock nut on the nylock nut will not come loose so this does not need torquing fully it just needs tightening till it's reasonably stiff on the uh, bracket to the drawbar still allowing it to tip. We're just going to go through the process of tightening them up at first. This won't be up to the correct torque. Uh, I use a battery ratchet that talks, that tightens to approximately 8 newton meters then torque up after. Spanners required to tighten the drawbar up and normally 8 newton meters is tight enough to allow the uh, nylon to hold and uh, stop it coming loose. Now go round and torque all the bolts up to make sure they don't come loose later. I've not tightened the bolt that holds the light board on because it allows it to move slightly allowing you to put the side panels on. The next process is to fit the wheels. This can be a problem as the uh, hubs have been painted and when they are painted the threads can be stiff and not allow the uh, wheel nuts to tighten up correctly. The wheel nuts are found in the bag that we got out earlier. This is suffering with the paint on the wheel studs so we run a die nut down to clean the threads. To clean the threads uh, you can either use a die nut which is the proper way uh, or a wire brush to clean the threads off. I always use a die nut. It's M10 by 1.25 which isn't the standard M10 thread, it's a finer thread and basically the die nut needs screwing onto the threads as tight as you can with your fingers. Uh, it's hard using the proper wrench because the wrench hits the center of the hub. This one has run on reasonably well and then run it back off. Uh, if you get stuck you need a wrench but you can only do small movements at a time as you hit the studs. Uh, but repeat this on all eight studs. As the die nut is the correct thread, 
as it goes down it takes all the paint off and makes the stud correct uh, so it removes all the black that this one has on and makes it silver again without actually damaging any uh, threads or making it smaller and it ends up nice and clean so that the nut will run down easily. Right, once all the studs are clean, uh, remount the wheel and the nuts should now spin on easily by hand allowing them to be torqued up correctly later. At this point I don't uh, torque them up, I wait until it's the correct way up at the end. I just run them up again, just run them up quickly using the correct to uh, tightening procedure. At this point if you're fitting a jockey wheel or a spare wheel it's easier to mount them now uh, fitting the jockey wheel will keep the trailer uh, level once you turn it the right way up and it's far easier to assemble the spare wheel because the spare wheel mounts underneath and it means that you're not laid on your back. The next part to assembling the trailer is fitting the panels. To fit the panels uh, it needs to hook onto the rear tailgate there, onto the rear light board and needs to be pulled forwards and dropped in place. Then the silver M8 uh, screws just need to secure it there and there. A small M6 screw goes in the bottom. Once that's on the front panel needs mounting. This is mounted on two screws to the base There. there and two screws fasten the front panel to the side panel then before you tighten anything up mount the other side panel in exactly the same way as the last one Then mount the rear panel. The rear panel just has two small hinges that slide onto a bracket. And then hook the rear catchers on. Once all the panels are on, you then want to mount the mud guards. None of the bolts have been tightened at this point. It's keeping the whole box square ready for tightening up. The mud guards are mounted on the slightly longer brassy colored screws, but they have a large plate that spreads the load to stop them tearing. These go through the holes on the side, ready to uh, mount it. They're fairly simple to mount as there are captive bolts in the side of the trailer. Erdy is one of the only brands that has captive bolts ready fitted and not, doesn't require any nuts to be fitted. Repeat the process on the opposite side. Again, mounting the plates onto the bolts to spread the load. And again, 
putting the bolts through the top holes. Once this is all assembled, uh, it's best to go round and talk all the nuts and bolts up. I do it in a particular process and it holds the trailer square. I go round and tighten them up and then once they're tightened I go round and talk them up. I start off with the mud guards. The mud guards pull the side of the uh, floor, the side panel level with the floor. I use an extension making it a lot easier to get in. Once the mud guards are done, I go to the front screws and I hold my thumb down the side uh, to try and make the side and the front panel level rather than having an edge shut out stuck out. Once this is done, I go round to the back and tighten the screws underneath as tight as I can with my fingers, which I'd already done with that one. This stops the back moving as much. And then I do the two outside ones. I then work round the vertical ones that hold it to the floor pad. Once that's done, um, I go round with a torque wrench and torque all of them up to 18 Newton meters, except for the two under the light board which need torquing to 8 Newton meters. The final bits to do that we put in earlier and didn't talk up are the nut in the back of the number plate with a large screwdriver and then the wheel nuts need torquing to 60 Newton meters. Once everything's been talked up and it's ready to go. It's always good practice to check the tyre pressures. All the tyre pressures are marked on a sticker on every drawbar of an Erdy. You find the tyre size and it gives you the tyre pressure in bars. This particular trailer is 2.5 bar which is approximately 34 psi. And that's how to build an Erdy 122 trailer.